Hello, welcome again, everybody. Uh, I was asked a question about printed circuit boards, and specifically the computer boards that I use in automotive throughout any make or model. Um, to, to give an explanation about them, <clears throat> first of all, let's say this is the air conditioning controller board. The printed circuit board himself, and to understand this, I have to give you a blank board, which means it has no components. This has no components, okay? These are obviously the components. As you can see, we have something called through hole that I spoke about before <clears throat> on any PCM board, on any TCM board, on any BCM board. You have a mixture, it's like a hybrid. You have surface mount and you have through hole. Through hole, as we spoke before, means that it goes through, the leads go through the board and the leads come out and you solder it like this. Surface mount. In other words, there are holes on the other side. <clears throat> the, the leads go through the holes and you solder it accordingly. Okay, like these, like these. And the surface mount that I spoke about before on all PCM boards means <clears throat> there are no holes. The actual, the actual components themselves are laid upon the pads and the traces to make the proper connections. So therefore, <clears throat> as you see over here, let's say, let's take for example, and I thought this would be more visible, more easier to understand. On a blank board, you have components with two pads that make a connection. A diode, D is a diode, D5 is diode. A capacitor has two leads to it, two pads, C53. They are laid flat on it. For the examples, for the examples themselves to look at, this brown one over here is a capacitor. This one over here, the black one with the writing on it, which is a little hard to focus, is a resistor. These are resistors. The value of the resistor is written upon the resistor itself. That's different from the through hole that we grew up on, where we had to figure out the color code, brown one and then black zero. It's written upon it. A little hard to see. So, the through hole, as you can see over here, they go right through it, through the holes. Through hole, through the holes. Not these. These are laid upon. The component is laid upon, and when I get my tripod, hopefully when I locate it, I can actually show you how to put them on for any PCM board, for any computer board, like I specified before. So, taking this into account, this is called surface mount. Okay, again, surface mount, the, re the components are laid upon, and these are the pads that make the connection. These are the pads that make the connection. These chips over here, ICs or chips, have many, many pins, many, many pads you will find on them. U4 d donates or says it's a chip. The chip itself goes in a specific order that I will show you one. Pin number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight pins to this chip. You have to make sure you put the chip in the proper order. One has to be here, not here. As denoted by this little opening over here. Now here, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten. Here. Here. 10 here, that's 20 pins on the chip. So therefore, this are chips that are laid upon. The problem being, these chips, when it comes to vibration on all modules, surface mount, and I'll, now hopefully you'll understand better what I'm referring to, the chips, the pins themselves come off the traces, the pads, these are called pads. The traces, the ones that make the actual connection. You see this? See the copper wiring? All this? The, the LAN goes through here. That's the connection. Instead of a hard wire, we go through here. There's a hole. 
I means there's another connection underneath it in the board goes over here now these are also when you want to test the point you could put your probe into this but that's not so important right now that's one board that's a, a surface mount board the other side of it as we said it's double-sided this is what technology is in automotive and in the whole industry you're going to have it on both sides so you can imagine when you're driving and those components are being introduced to that vibration when you hit a bump or anything like that you can just imagine what surface mount goes through through hole as we specified before goes through the holes sometimes they have cold solder joints which I'll show you how to repair those in a, in a video. But these, when they come off, that's it. You have to resolder it. You have to reflow it, as they say. There's a certain technique how to reflow it with flux, a liquid called flux. Always use flux, the liquid, when you do surface mounts. You cannot do, just put solder to it because these pads will come off. Once these pads come off, that's it. That's, that's the ball game right there. So these are the other side of it. This is a capacitor. This is a coil. L is a coil. Res a resistor is R63. Okay? These are a diode. D2 is a diodes. C16 is a polarized electrolytic capacitor over here. Now, what's the point of all this video? What is the point? Okay? Let's say this is a practice board that you started with, okay? The chips, as you see, as you see, and I'll show you in a video, these pins, see these pads? See these pins? These pins right here, these pins have to make contact with these pads, one, two, three, all these have to make, these are the pads with solder. They have to make contact. In the situation where you're driving and you hit bumps and vibration, these pins will come off. That's the problem with surface mount. Hopefully you understand it better now. So therefore, when these come off, you have to re-solder it, reflow it, it the, the, the term is. So this now, these chips go here this is through hole these leads of the chips go right through it through the holes you do not see holes over there because these are laid on top of it surface mount through hole through hole through hole through hole and then surface mount and they get smaller than this these components get even smaller for this than surface mount through hole see the leads these are not the problem, like I said. These are the problem, the chips. So when you put the chips, they go like this. There are different types of chips. They go like this, and they go like this. Different QFP chips and all these different chips. CU7. So when you put them, you have to make sure they make contact. And like I told you, when I get the tripod, you'll see it done. Just like these have to make contact contact with everything this is just an introduction now let's take it a step further so now i just told you these chips the pads and the pins themselves have to make contact comes technology okay come technology what do we do with this chip this is called a bga chip this bga chips you do not see any pins this is what's going on in the computer boards of your car. You do not see any pins. See pins sticking out? See pins sticking out? Where are the pins here? It's not. It's on a board. This, the connections are here on the back. This is put on by solder paste through an oven. You cannot hand solder this. These balls get make contact with the solder. The solder then make contact with all you would have uh, an array it's called and the solder balls will make contact with the paste and with all the balls that have to make contact with all these 200 300 
pads, whatever you call it, on the board themselves. This is the problem. This cannot be done by hand. It has to be done by machine, by ovens. This is the technology that's going on. So therefore, therefore, these type of chips that are leading the future in the industry, these can make more chips. You can put more circuits into this. That means you have more space to put more other components. We're, we're, sm we're making the boards smaller and smaller and smaller because of chips like these BGA chips, they're called. Okay? Now we have other technology. We're putting chips on top of chips. They're called piggyback chips. So in other words, you'll have a chip over here. You'll have another chip on top of this with other pins. And if you think that's crazy, then they have these vertical chips. You see how this is laying down? The chip is standing up, and the pin is making contact. This is what's going on in the industry. That's why I wanted to show you, when you're talking about PCM chips and problems and things like that, it's just not a capacitor or anything like that. These surface mount have to make contact, and they don't. You're going to have problems, and you're going to have lack of communications to PCM and things like that. As I spoke about yesterday, about the harness wiring in a couple of years or very clear, probably near in the future, we're going to go to fiber optic instead of harnessing. So fiber optic, as you know, is the speed of light. There's nothing faster than the speed of light. Just like your cable, your cable uh, TV and all that. Everything is obviously fiber optic. So is the industry of automotive going to fiber optic. And instead of 12 volts, it'll go to 24 volts in your car. Because you have more accessories, more current is needed. So therefore, I just wanted to show you what's going on in these modules in your automotive, what the problems are, and it's not so easy to repair them all the time. It's not so easy as just a cold solder joint on a relay or things like that. It's a relay right here. It's not so easy just to go and say, okay, let's, let me re-solder it, reflow it. You have to know how to reflow it. You have to know how to resolder it, like I said yesterday. You cannot make contact with the chips. These are the chips, the other side of it, the through hole, see? These are the leaves that were cut. You cannot make contact with this because of static discharge through that chip. So therefore, if you reflow, you resolder something, is the connector, you have to know how to do it properly. Okay, use flux. I'll show you in a video. Hopefully, there'll be an interest for that. I'll show you uh, uh, how to do it properly. Again, all chips, all modules, and all cars will have these type of surface mount chips. Whether it's 200 pins, whether it's 15 pins, whether it's 6 pins, it does not make a difference. They have to make contact with these pads. These pads, you see the pads? They make contact through this, through the traces. The traces make contact to the circuit that needs to be done. They have to be done properly. Okay? So, here's the connector that it goes through. Here's the connector. You plug it in. All these pins, all these pins, see the pins that make contact? From this till here is the connector. Then after the connector, here's the contact. Here's the trace. Here's the trace. Here's the trace. See the green? Here's the trace. Here's the green from this pin. Here's the trace from this pin. Here's the, the trace from this pin. Whenever you see this, a thick, thick green, that means it's ground. It's a ground plane on these type of boards, the thick ones, as opposed to these thin ones. Okay, so I hope this was helpful. And like I said, heat is not always a deterrent for these things, for these modules. Vibration is one of the worst problems when it comes to anything. An aircraft that lands, when it hits the ground, and I work with these, these PC boards have to be able to take vibration. So when it lands, these boards, these chips cannot come apart. It's just like a car. I work with this for years. Just like on a ship, when we had a contract, for a, a backup generator, it had to pass a vibration test. That vibration test took a whole 
there were multi layers of PC boards, multi multi layers of PC boards, many of them. It had to take a weight of 500 pounds to hit that, and still that board had to be intact. All those boards had to be intact because it was going on a military ship. It has to withstand a torpedo and things like that if it's a military contract, which means it has to withstand a 500 pound weight. And believe me, many times it broke into pieces. Just like a car, a car has to withstand this, but within limit, it's not these, these kind of components coming up in the future, the BGAs and all these cannot withstand everything. So I just wanted you to get a, a, a vision of it, an introduction to what these modules are made of, what's inside of them, and what we're dealing with. It's just not, let me take out a capacitor, replace it with another capacitor. You have to be aware of these connections. I cannot touch a pad because I'm making connection to this chip. Okay, so I hope this was informative. Like I said, hopefully if the views will be there, I'll show you how to solder these things. If there's enough interest, I made it a year ago. There was not that much interest of views in it, so I just discontinued it. So we'll see how it goes this time. Anyway, thanks for watching. My channel is Joe Electronics Schematics for Auto. My other one is Automotive Electronics Schematics for Joseph. I'm trying to get that one monetized. And about a comment about um, a dead battery and it was... Uh, 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 just because there's a dead battery in a car doesn't mean you cannot get boosted. You can always boost your dead battery unless it's that weak. So just to clear that one up, thanks for watching.